What event put Calgary on the Canadian map? Was it the building of Fort Calgary in 1875? Was it the discovery of oil in Turner Valley in 1914? Well, those who were around at the time will tell you it was neither of these events, and it didn't even happen in Calgary. I was involved in the great training trip to Toronto in 1948. It was a football game in Toronto, the 1948 Grey Cup. And on the Tuesday night, the train left the station in Calgary, headed for Toronto, 2,500 miles away, three nights and two days of travel. Or as Charles Dickens would say, 2,500 miles of making merry. The Stampede Special was 14 cars long and carried 250 people, a dozen horses, a chuck wagon, and a four-piece Western band. They were on their way to Toronto to root for the hometown boys, the Calgary Stampeders. It was a notorious thing in, in, uh, in Canadian football at that time because the East used to always win. And Calgary had never been to the national final. You can imagine the excitement in the city of home. There was only... I believe about 70,000 people at that point, and there were, we used to draw crowds of 15,000, so there was more than 20% of the city used to come to the games, and the rest of the city was caught up, got caught up in it. If enthusiasm among the rooters could win football championships, the Calgary Stampeders would already be possessors of the coveted Grey Cup. Calgary Herald, Wednesday, November 24th, 1948. Reels and square dancers in the station and in the lobby of the Royal York Hotel had pop-eyed Easterners looking on in amazement. They thought the Calgary Stampede had moved to the shores of Lake Ontario. Calgary Herald, Friday, November 26, 1948. The Stampeder Football Club was a scruffy bunch of kids with high hopes of being the best football team in Canada. Only an extreme optimist would have ever believed that they had a chance, but Calgary has always been full of extreme optimists. 20,000 people crowded into Varsity Stadium for the game. Top price admission was $2 a seat. Bill Pratt was working for Red Dutton, president of the National Hockey League at the time. Mr. Dutton said to me, uh, Bill, you're going to be cold. And I said, oh, no, Mr. D, I'm not going to be cold. Lots of clothes. Oh, yeah, you're going to be cold. Here, put this coat on. I remember a big black coat, quite long coat. He put it on my shoulders, and I pretty went to the floor. There was four bottles of whiskey in the pockets. I was to be the bartender. Being a non-drinker is the best guy to have as a bartender. But one thing, I had the seat right on the 55-yard line in the 12th row. I remember very clearly. But I had to pass drinks in both directions. When the game was over, and Mr. Dutton said to me, hey, kid, here's a list. Collect it for me, will you? And it was his bets for that game, $27,000. The optimists had been right. The Calgary Stampeders had beaten the Ottawa Rough Riders 12 to 7. History had been made on a football field, and Calgary had stepped onto the Canadian stage. We rode the train back with, uh, with the fans, and for an 18-year-old boy, that was quite an experience. And, and there were things um, that went on I didn't believe. You know, I, I couldn't, <laughs> I can't really tell you a lot about them, but uh, there was uh, drinking that I couldn't participate in or, or didn't participate in. There were all kinds of partying and things that uh, went on, and it was really a rocking train. The 1948 Grey Cup victory party in Calgary was VE Day, New Year's Day and Dominion Day all rolled into one. John Clark was in the crowd that day and remembers the bedlam in the streets when the victorious stamps came home. It, it was, everybody went to meet them just like the ending of the war, really. And I was standing, I remember, right outside the station and a friend of mine, Spud Murphy, who had more guts in the slaughterhouse, he put on a Homburg hat and he was always right up on the stage with the big wheels and he had no official capacity, but he was amazing. I was standing there, and I look up, and here's Spud there. like the, So he says, John, and I took my hat off, and he took my picture and all it out. 18-year-old Normie Kwong wore number 23 on the field that day. At first, Normie says his mother didn't approve of him playing such a rough sport. She found out about uh, football, how, how it was played, and uh, some of the hitting that went on in it. So she didn't exactly encourage me, and in fact... Uh, my first year when I came home from practice, I used to have to take my gear and hide it in the garage and uh, come back in the house and have, have dinner. And she'd, she'd wonder why I smelled so bad all the time. So 
I had to give her an excuse that I used to run a lot. The 1948 Grey Cup proved two things, that those barefoot boys on the prairie could play football, and more importantly, that the people of Calgary collectively could do anything they set their minds to, and the rest of Canada now knew it. These Calgarians could never have imagined that this attitude would help them welcome the world and host the most successful Olympic Winter Games ever, exactly 40 years later. But that comes later in our story.